please give a warm welcome to Chris Alexander. All right. We're going to talk about the wow factor. This morning I want to talk about something other than sales skills. I want to talk to you about that other factor that exists within all top salespeople. There's this hidden ingredient that each and every one of us has. We've seen people sit in training classes and they score 98%, 100% on their test. They are perfect. Put them out in the field. There they sit in the model home. One bombs and one succeeds. What is that? What is that thing that makes a great salesperson a great salesperson? And what is the other person not doing that they should be doing? I want to talk about the mystical today. I want to talk about the mysterious. I want to talk about the stuff that we don't talk about. I want to talk about love and energy and focus and, and the secret of attraction. How we can attract people to us. I want to talk about how you apply that and how you get that sticky emotion on you that people just want to come around you like bees to a honey. Talking about charisma, how do we get it? Who has it? And how can you get it before you leave here today? It's awesome, right? Yes. Recently, I was at a, a first team sales conference and we were sitting down and there were, there were two people sitting next to me. We were having lunch. As we are sitting there, I turn over to the one beautiful young woman and uh, she just looks great, well presented. And I say, how's it going? It's terrible. Oh, things have gone so bad in the last six or seven months. I'm getting out of the business. I'm going to see if I can go and sell cars or do something else, man, because that's got to be easier than this. Now, I'm a strong believer in not hanging around miserable people, right? Because we all know the saying, misery loves company. So when you, when you get around one of those, what do you do? Run! Right? And I turned to the person on my left. I said, how are you doing? She said, it's terrific. Things are going so well. I'm loving it. I sold two houses last week. And the week before I sold one. And the week before I sold two. She says, I've sold five in the last three, you know, three weeks. And I think I've got two prospective buyers for next week. If it keeps on going this way, right, I'm going to be able to retire. You know, and my husband will be, and I will be able to take those trips that we wanted and, and so on. I said, hey man, where do you work? She says, in the same office as the woman sitting next to you. <laughs> and again, it's right there, right? They work out of the same office. They have the same people coming to them. It's the same marketplace, same price point, same promotion, same all the five P's, right? But one's doing it, and one ain't doing it. And I saw some people that have been in the business here 15 and 20 years, and the reason that they are in it for 15 and 20 years is because they have the wow factor. And so at the end of the day, when we did our research, we found that it was all about the people. It was all about the people and the perception that the customer has. And perception affects relationship, my friends. When people have a perception of a company, it affects the relationship with that company. When people have an impression of you and a perception of you, it affects the relationship that they have. And relationship creates trust, and trust leads to sales, and it makes people act on the recommendations that you make. And will they buy quicker? Yes, when they trust you. Will the closing cycle be uh, uh, reduced? Of course. And in today's market, that's your differentiating point. That's your competitive advantage. Your competitive advantage is when people like you, when they want to do business with you. 
Because I know it takes only one surly person to mess up a beautiful dinner with the person you love most, right? There you are. This is that special night. Glass of red wine in front of you. Candlelight. You're looking across at your special one. Stars in your eyes. Boy, this, is, this night is going to end up just in the, in the, in the perfectly. <laughs> and then along comes the surly server. Now even if the meal was good, even if they served the meal on time, even if it was perfect, all of that, right, can be ruined by one surly person, one down-in-the-mouth, misery loves company type, and that's it. People who have the wow factor, companies who have the wow factor, love what they do. They love what they do. They're energized by it. They don't have to go on a goal-setting course. They get up in the morning. It's like they're going out to play golf, right? I mean, you know, for some guys, uh, they'll get up at 4 in the morning to go out and play golf. I get them to get to work by 8 a.m. Because, you know, they love golf, but they don't love going to work. So there they come, body on droop, mind in neutral, right? Don't talk to me. And then as soon as the customer walks in the door, they perk up. And they think they can fool the customer by faking it for a while. Ever dealt with an insincere person? A non-authentic individual with a phony smile and the desperado look? <laughs> yeah, fear of loss. As soon as you have it, baby, you're gone. You're history. Right? People can feel it. So, love. Love what you do. If you happen to uh, be in a job that you really love, and there's an English saying that we use, it, it says that if you've managed to land with your ass in the butter, <laughs> right, meaning that you fell into a cushy place and, you know, uh, you know, your backside's in the butter, well, all more power to you. That's great. But if you haven't, you can choose to. Because you still have the power of choice to love what you do. And I can always tell when I'm buying from somebody who loves what they're doing. Recently I bought some shirts, can you tell? <laughs> and you know, the guy laid out the shirts for me and he kind of swung around and said, How's that, Mr. Alexander? That's a real range of great shirts. He was so motivated, he was so energized about his product that I said, I'll take that one and that one. <laughs> and they're still sitting in the cupboard. <laughs> but I bought it anyway, but I bought it from him. I bought it from his belief in his product. And so that's what the love is. So wow factor, or the wow, is all about the experience. And you're going to say to me, is that service? And I'm going to say, only partly. Are you going to say to me, is that my product? And I'm going to say, it's only a part of it. Are you going to say, that's the location? And I'm going to say, that's not all of it. Are you going to say, it's the design of the product? And I'm going to say, it's a piece of it. But there's another piece, and that's you. And you create that experience. You can have great product. You can have great services. But if the person doesn't feel they're having a good experience, it ain't going to happen. So experiences are as distinct from services as services are from products. They're three different things. And the one that influences it all is you. Experience must deliver the wow factor. You want referrals? The best sale you can have is a referral sale. You're going to close 70% of those. And that's how great salespeople do it. At least 60 to 70% of their sales come from referrals because they do this great, magnificent job that when the customer leaves, they say, I want to tell my brother's sister, my uncle, my aunt, my 98-year-old granny about it. I only buy from people I like. I only buy from people I trust. I only buy from professionals. I would never go to a dentist that had rotten teeth. 
Never buy insurance from a person that doesn't have insurance. I never buy a house from a person that doesn't own a house. I want to deal with the product of the product. And that's the third thing that's going to get you the wow factor. Go out and buy a house. Have the experience. Understand the roots of what you're doing. Understand what ownership is about. And then and then and then, right? The wow factor is about how you connect, engage, excite, delight, and convert dreams into reality. How do you get the wow? You get it through awareness. Write this down. Awareness, attitude, and action. How do you translate the secret, the secret, the law of attraction into reality with these three things? That's how you take your vision and you convert it and materialize it. You manifest it into reality through having great present moment awareness in today, right? You take your vision from where it is and you become aware of what that vision is. Then you put behind it the emotion, the attitude, the energy that you need. And then you translate that emotion, that drive, into goals and into actions. These three A's, as simple as it sounds, it ain't easy to do. That's why a lot of us don't do it. If you're not aware, you can't actually hear things. You're not in the present moment. You won't hear the buying signal, right? If you don't have the attitude, you're not going to attract people with non-verbal energy. And if you don't ask for the clothes, you're not going to get the deal, or you might get it by luck, chance, faith, or maybe your horoscopes were on that week. But I don't believe in the horoscopes because when I was at university, I used to write it for the university newspaper column. <laughs> And every week I'd have to work out what are we going to say about Taurus this week. I'm talking about common sense, feet on the ground folks, stuff that you can do like the flight attendant on my flight up to San Francisco not long ago. You know, it's my favorite story. I like to tell it because this person had the wow factor. I'm on the plane and as I'm sitting on the plane, getting ready for my talk and getting myself all fired up. As you can tell, I'm an animated, energetic speaker, right? <laughs> Thank you. You can applaud. That's okay. <laughs> and as I'm sitting there, the pilot comes on. She says, we're going to take off in about 10 minutes. There's somebody connecting to this flight from an international flight. I don't pay any attention to that. I keep on getting ready, right? The next thing I see this guy come through the door. He's about the size of Jeff Pitzer over here. Jeff, stand up, right? Jeff, stand up. He's like a six foot six guy. Look at that, right? Right? But except he's six foot six, tall and wide as well. Man Mountain, <laughs> right? And as I see him coming through the door, he's got a beard, he's got this case, he's sweating. Roo warrior, right? <laughs> and I don't pay any attention to him. And the next thing I tell you, Barbara, he's standing right next to me like this. You're in my seat. <laughs> so I look up at him and I'm not the biggest guy in town. And courage. <laughs> I didn't have at that moment. So I just, okay, I'm going to move over. And he sits down and those shocks and the plane almost hit that asphalt, you know. <laughs> and he starts complaining, whining and moaning. Look at that flight attendant. She's just on this plane to catch her husband. Right? And I'm thinking, oh my God. I'm going to be with this dude for an hour and a half, man. Am I going to be able to take it? And he's complaining about everything. And then he says, what do you do? <laughs> so I write books on joy. creating extraordinary joy. <laughs> <laughs> so he then turns around and puts his hand out. He says, put it there, partner. I'm glad to meet another joyful person. <laughs> uh, 
And automatically I realized at that moment in time that we all think we're joyful, we all think we have the great attitude, but you know what, you've got to work on it. <laughs> it's like putting on your jacket every day, you've got to put it on. You've got to get up in the morning, you have a choice. What's my attitude jacket like today? Is it, yeah, baby? Or is it, yeah, baby? <laughs> what is it? From one to ten, what's your attitude jacket? Anyway, there we are on the plane. Along comes the flight attendant. Very nice, smile, wonderful person. Gives us a little sandwich and something to drink. I am totally happy. This was before they did all the stuff on these planes. He looks at his sandwich. He says to her, what's this? Right, you met people like that, right? She says, it's a club sandwich. Club sandwich? What do you mean this is a club sandwich? This isn't a club sandwich. You don't know what the hell a club sandwich is. Right, just obnoxious and rude and using words that you shouldn't use. And I'm looking at him and I'm saying, you don't have the power. That flight attendant's going to throw you out of here. Anyway, she didn't do that. She said, what's wrong with it? He said, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It's a bad sandwich. And I saw this kind of look come into her eyes, you know. <laughs> and I was thinking that she was going to pull out a 357 Magnum <laughs> and go, make my day, Park. <laughs> right. But she didn't. She took the sandwich and she said, sir, you are right. Bad sandwich, bad sandwich, bad sandwich. <laughs> and she took it away, right? Everybody in that area started laughing. They were all just having the great, you know, the, even big man mountain. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> when I got off the plane, I said to her, that was magical. That's what I call the wow factor. You had it. You were proactive. You weren't reactive. You were in control. You controlled the energy in that situation. You made Yuma the connector. You made it happen. You had the right awareness, the right attitude, and you went into action. She said, you know what? I taught myself to do this because I just love to fly. I've loved it since I was a teenage girl. That's all I've ever wanted to do. And if I let that kind of person get to me, I'd give them my dreams. And I'm not giving them my happiness. I'm not giving them my dreams. So the alternative is, I have to learn how to deal with them. I can't let them get to me. So I'm going to be in charge of every encounter. If you have that kind of energy, you are going to connect and you're going to control and you're going to charismaize people and they're going to gravitate towards you. So let's talk about how you can shine like she did. And he has a little saying for you. Do you know how to shine? Be your original self. That six-year-old child that once freely and spontaneously <laughs> laughed, loved and joyfully lived each day to the fullest because they were in charge of their lives. Isn't that the truth? Explain in one word descriptions to me the qualities of a six-year-old. Come on, give it to me. What is it? Give me one word descriptions that describe a six-year-old. Playful, thank you. What else? Happy. 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 Yeah. What else? Honest. honest. Absolutely honest. Sometimes too honest, right? <laughs> Recently I was up at the university and, and as we're there, there's a bunch of people and this beautiful little girl dressed up perfectly for the occasion, but she's staring at this woman like this. <laughs> Did you do some work? <laughs> you know, she's staring at her and it doesn't matter who you are, if somebody stares at you long enough like that, what do you do? You start getting a little edgy, right? <laughs> so she gets a bit edgy and she goes, what are you looking at? The little girl says, 
I'm waiting for you to drink. What do you mean you're waiting for me to drink? She says, well, my mommy says you drink like a fish. <laughs> True story. <laughs> because everybody here was once a six-year-old. But something happened between six and 36, right? I don't know exactly what it is. Each one had their own experiences. We all went through life learning different things. And within us, we have a set of tapes you know, a set of blueprints that we think we should live by. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't care where you've been. I don't care whether you were born on the wrong side of the tracks. And unless you've been severely abused by somebody, you can change who you are. You can change where you're going. You can change everything about yourself by changing what you think, feel and do from now on. Do you believe me? Awareness, being here, totally here with your customer, mind, body, and spirit, right? Next one, be authentic. Be the real you. You can never, ever be as good as the person you're trying to copy. You can never. You'll always be a number two of the person you're trying to copy, or maybe a number three. But you'll always be a number one you. And when they made you, they broke the mold. They broke it. There's nobody with eyes like you, with arms like you, with legs like you, with a voice like yours. There's nobody that can kiss your husband the way you kiss him. I'll have to ask him that, of course. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, you're an original. You were custom designed, custom made. You got to reach down and believe that. You're one of a kind. You wouldn't sell an eye for a million dollars. You wouldn't sell a leg for two million dollars. You wouldn't sell your voice for five million, would you? There's no amount of money that can take away your authenticity. Only you can when you give it up. Only you can when you decide that you're not going to lead yourself. That when you're going to be out of directed instead of inner directed. But you have to be curious and inquisitive. Don't lose that. Go and watch a sunset. Get some tears in your eyes. Go and watch some talent, you know. You see somebody sing. Let the emotion touch you. Be there, be in that emotion, that's the power, right? I'm not talking about running around and hugging everybody and, and being one of those uh, I need attention type of people. I'm talking about you being in touch with you, being more sentient. The moment that you look at a sunset or you see a little baby or somebody with talent who's perfectly on pitch, and it brings a tear to your eye, right? You know that you are profoundly and truly alive. You're validated. And that is the doorway for your home buyer to connect with you. Because you can't be in touch with others if you are not in touch with you. You can't lead somebody when you can't lead yourself. Sales managers, are you listening to me? Leadership begins with you. When you're authentic and you're real and you're out front and you're making the sales and you're doing it and you're calling them up on that Sunday night and you are saying, how did you do this week? What can I do to help you? How can I coach, counsel, nurture and develop you as a champion? then you are leading and you deserve to lead others. But when you're not leading yourself and you're not doing it with heart and you're not coming from that real place, don't try to lead others. Spontaneous and vulnerable and be an active listener. The best listening story I can give you is when I was in New Orleans, you know, in that French quarter and it's in the afternoon, not at night. Because I'm going to do the dinner talk that night and I'm walking around 
and I sit down on this bench. And there's a couple sitting next to me, and the next minute, there's a little guy of about 10 or 11 right in front of them. And he says to the guy, Hey, mister, I bet you I can tell you where you got him shoes. The guy says, Get away from me. How, get a, just go, go on. How can you tell me where I got my shoes? He says, Mister, I bet you five dollars I can tell you where you got him shoes. So he says, Okay, you little twerp. Here's my five dollars. He says, Mister, I'm going to give you the biggest lesson in your life. You weren't listening. I didn't say I tell you where you bought him shoes. I said I tell you where you got him shoes. And you got him on your feet. <laughs> True story, right? And so sometimes we listen, but we don't listen. And so active listening is vitally important. Wow! So let's say this one together, folks, okay. Say wow to the world, and the world will say wow to you. Okay, can you say it? One, two, three. Say wow to the world, and the world will say wow to you. Why? Why is that so? Because life is reciprocal. Everything is reciprocity. You know, if you give, you receive. Now some people say to me, man, I've been giving and giving and giving. I say, when did you start? And they say, well, just, uh, you know, about three months ago. I said, and so for the previous 45 years you've been taking, I said, you've got a little bit more giving to do before you fill up that bank account. And that's why service is so important. That's why it's so important that you understand that human psychology. That when you give first, it creates the law of reciprocity. So let's talk about attitudes. Making authentic choices. Authentic choices are choices that are true to oneself, right? Not the opinions of other people. Not the opinions of anybody. Hold yourself free of ambient negativity. Be a synergist. Work as a team player. You cannot whistle a symphony. And no matter how good you are, you're going to be much better with a good second working with you. And if you're a good second, you're going to make more money working with a good first rather than being envious. So be true to yourself as well as understanding what your strengths are. Make change a source of strength. Be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. So many people love to be able to see the problems, right? Have you noticed that? Oh man, they'll tell you what's wrong with you. They'll tell you what's wrong with your company. They'll tell you whatever. Don't you ever be like that. And be grateful and humble. My son taught me this thing about attitude recently. I did a long talk and I was sitting down it was a Sunday morning and I'd come back on a Saturday night, come back from the East Coast and you know I'm normally upbeat so that particular morning I'm sitting there and I'm drinking my coffee and he comes down, he was staying with us for the weekend, doesn't live with us, he's grown up now. He says, hey dad, are you energized and happy? I said, yeah. He said, well notify your face. I said, I am happy. He says, smile, Dad, I'll pay for the stitches. <laughs> you know. He said, you're telling everybody, Dad, he says, to be a product of the product. You can't do it out there. you got to do it at home, too. you got to be grateful and humble, and you got to be that same person wherever you are. It's got to be a lifestyle, right? That's who you are. A product of the product. Wow. Okay. So in other words, and say it with me, life should not be a boring journey from birth to grave. But rather, you should skid broadside into home base, thoroughly excited, proclaiming loudly, Wow! What a ride! Let's talk about the action. The last thing, power. Power. 
Power, say it with me. Power, power, power. Come on, Lance. You're gonna join with me. You're gonna put your fist like this, baby. Are you ready? Put your left foot forward. Right? You're in a karate stance now. Right? You're gonna transfer that energy, but it's gonna be love and energy. You're gonna give those people their dreams. You're gonna give them that home. You're gonna fulfill those aspirations. You're gonna do what this nation was built on, the American dream, and you're gonna do it with power! Come on. Power! Yeah! Good, let's do it together. We're gonna do three. Power! 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 With me, dude, with me. <laughs> Teamwork, okay, one, two, three. Power! Power! Power, now join in. from the vision. If you can't see it, you won't believe it. If you don't believe it, you won't get the emotion. If you don't get the emotion, you won't get the motivation. Because motivation is an emotion. It's not logical. It's not a thought process. It's how fired up are you? Do you have enough desire to create a vision? that will inspire you, that will delight your customers, that will energize them in a way that will make them say, you are the one. You are the one. And it doesn't matter whether you're selling homes, insurance or whatever, it separates you, differentiates you, because a great insurance salesperson is not called an insurance salesperson. That guy will tell you, I want you to meet my guy my that's partner. taking care of me. of me in the life insurance arena. He's a great guy. You can trust him, right? I want you to meet a great legal mind. No, I want you to meet a shark, right? Yeah. yeah? See, that's what it is. When you have the vision and it starts up here, it affects you, your feelings, which affects your action. Do you have a vision? The Secret is a great program right now, but we've been doing it for 20 years. The great ones have always known you have to have a vision. Great companies know you have to have a vision. Because when you have that vision, you create shared destiny. And when you create shared destiny, your team comes together. Great leaders know that they need to have a vision to create that power underneath that organization, that people power, that shared destiny that vitalizes and invigorates everything. Next thing, let's get passionate, folks. Let's get this passion going. And in this kind of climate, it's very hard to keep it up. But it's a major prerequisite. It's a major thing right now. The passionate ones that can keep motivated are the ones that are going to stay there and get the closes when they come through. They'll go and pick up the closes. It's important that you do your part in making sure that your passion for what you do is stays up. Your sales manager really cannot do that for you. I can motivate you today, I can get you inspired, I can get you going and taking action, but you have to sustain it. Yeah, you gotta do it. You gotta get yourself on a regime. You gotta say, okay, when I drive in, I'm not gonna listen to that junk radio talk show trash. I'm gonna pop in a tape by Chris Alexander. <laughs> because no matter how many times you've listened to those CDs or those tapes or watched those DVDs, you always missed something. And you know what I learned? You're in a different place when you listen to it next time. You're not in the same place every time you listen to that CD. So when you listen to it that first time, and you got the message, you're now grown. 
you're in a different place. Your awareness is going to be different. Your ears are going to be more open. You will be in a different relationship. You will have something have changed in your life. So when you listen to that same old CD, you are going to hear something different. And I'm asking you today to have the courage to break through the fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I'm asking you today that whenever you get fear, uncertainty, and doubt, to have the courage to break through it because the difference between great performance and mediocre performance is courage. Courage. You have to be bold with yourself. You have to have a little bit of authentic belief. And nobody's going to say you're not frightened when you confront that fear of speaking in public. Nobody's saying that you shouldn't be frightened when you be a little bit more assertive if you're a non-assertive person and ask for the clothes. You're entitled to feel fear. But I'm asking you today, do you have the courage to break through it? Because that's the key, it's not feeling frightened, it's having the courage to break through it, to go through the fear, uncertainty and doubt. Right? That's the key. When I first came to the United States uh, 18 years ago, I had been speaking on the international platform for a long time, for about 10 years before that. But when I got to the United States, it was a whole different thing. I had to now start doing business with neighborhood people who didn't know who this funny guy was with the funny accent with all this energy. So they didn't really want to talk to me and it got to me. They could smell it. And the person that pointed it out to me was my wife. You know, you see she's at the back there, she looks all sweet, right? <laughs> She's a straight shooter, baby. So I'm going like, what do you think's the problem, sweetheart? She said, you're the problem. And of course, in typical male fashion, I like, me, the problem? You're the problem. She said, why don't you go and take a walk and think about it? So which I did. And I walked for about three weeks before the, I was blessed with some divine intervention you know, and I got this flash that maybe she was right. And so I went out and I bought this big old red nose. <laughs> you see it here? And I put it on because I wanted to remind myself of the fear that people could sense from me. And I wanted to take license to teach myself to confront it. So I said, sweetheart, you were right, so I'm going to do the shopping for you. And people would look at me and they'd get really frightened because just about then there was a mass murderer wandering around that had a clown's nose on, you know. And the little kids, they would actually come up to me and they would not be frightened at all. They'd go, hey mister, what's that that you got on there? I said, it's a clown's nose. Why are you wearing it? I said, because the nose inside is afraid. I said, hey, I feel afraid sometimes. Can I have one of those? Because I don't want to feel afraid either. And I wore it for about a week and then it came off. And here's a true story, folks. Within four days after that fear disappearing, I closed a deal with a company in San Diego called Amlin Pharmaceuticals. 2% of the world's population initiate, innovate, create, and make things happen. Only 2%. 14% criticize them, condemn them, and or choose to assist them while the 2% is make it happen. And 84% are content and don't know what the hell's going on <laughs> unless the 2s or 14s choose to tell them. My question to you is what do you want to be? A 2, 14, or 84? The authentic choice is yours. And finally, my friends, enthusiasm sells. So let's say it together. Wow! Enthusiasm sells. So what do we talk about today? Great experiences deliver the wow factor. You have to have a great sense of awareness. 
You have to have the right kind of attitude. You have to go into action. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you.